Many of the potential Redmi K20 Pro buyers are prior Pocophone owners or people in the Indian market looking to upgrade uh, to a device. And today, we are just going to talk about what it's like switching back and forth between both of these devices as a daily driver. Hey, my name is Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use. Before we start talking about what it's like to switch back and forth between these two devices, I want to thank everyone that uses my affiliate links. Without your support, we could not keep this channel going. Next up, if you guys are looking for more written content, go ahead and check out my website in the description down below. It's got tons of great written information. And if you like the content on this channel, you might like what's on the website. Also, go ahead and check out the Telegram communities I have in the description down below. Okay, enough talking and let's get into this. As I just recently inserted my SIM into the Pocophone F1. If you currently have a Pocophone F1 right now, I'm talking about whether or not it would be worth it to upgrade to this device, being the Redmi K20 Pro. And first thing that we're gonna get started with is the build. Now, as you see, I have both of these devices naked. And with, a, with both of these devices naked, no case, uh, the Redmi K20 Pro definitely feels better in your hand. That said, if you like vinyl skins and you normally skin a device, well, the body and the actual way that the Pocophone F1 is constructed with its plastic would be more durable in the long run to drops accidentally or whatnot. I have very, very little confidence, I guess we could say, in the overall durability in the long run of the K20 Pro. But as we just talked about their construction and their build quality, The moment you put both of these devices in a case, which you might do, uh, a lot of the differences in build or in hand feel completely go away. Next thing I wanna talk about is the notch, because this is something I really don't like the notch. I, I don't specifically like it in the Poco F1. I don't like it taking up my screen. That said, is this a better option, right? Is a moving part that can get damaged it's an area that water or other dust can get in. Is that a better option? Ultimately, I'm gonna say that the motorized camera is a worse option than a teardrop notch. So I don't like this, but I also don't like this, right? I think that the Mi 9 has a better solution for this problem. I have more room for notifications and I don't have to worry about uh, ingress of dirt or even sand. In regards to the notch solution for these two devices, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they are kind of the same in my book. This is uglier, this is more fragile. Next, the in-display fingerprint scanner. Now, the in-display fingerprint scanner on this device is really, really good. It's really, really fast, and it works when I've got water on my fingers. Is it better than the one that's on the Poco F1? No, it is not better. Uh, I do not think that a underscreen fingerprint scanner in this implementation is necessarily a better option than having it on the back. Also, I'd like to point out that because there is no wireless charging, uh, they could have fitted this rear-mounted fingerprint scanner on the back. Totally an option didn't have to do it. Unfortunately, they have the headphone jack on this side and they have the motorized camera on this side. So this has to rest between the two units. Again, a compromise that uh, I don't necessarily see the benefit in. And this is so fast and so reliable at all times. Next up, the display. There is no comparison. This is a better display in every way. It's more power efficient, much better colors, much better saturation. This one has light bleed issues, very minor, but it does have some light bleed issues. There's no way to get around. The display on the K20 Pro is great, and we're not gonna talk about any of the touch issues, but it's a fantastic display. Now, I create photo and video content. I try to calibrate and look at my photos on a monitor that is very neutral. Just like listening to music, I want to hear music for what it sounds like, and I like speakers or headphones that are accurate to the sound. A AMOLED display in its current configuration is very, very oversaturated, and you either have to tweak a lot of that, 
in the display or you have to uh, try to modify some stuff in the settings. So when I take a picture on my phone, before I ever edit it, it looks great on here. And then I have to like oversaturate even more sometimes. With this display, it's a little bit more color accurate. Cameras. This is the IMX363, IMX586, main snapper or main picture. The main camera between the two are not that far apart, okay? Uh, the files that you get out of each of these devices in regards to just the main cameras are good. And so overall, okay, there isn't that big of a difference or there's not a big enough difference that can't be remedied with software for me to say that the main camera on this is significantly better or worth an upgrade for this camera. Okay. But in all fairness, we have two more cameras or more effective cameras here. This is a depth sensor. Okay. We have an ultra wide and we have a telephoto. And for someone like myself that likes to create stuff, these are fantastic. I love that creative freedom. It's great. But the quality of these two is much, much worse than even the main camera on here. So for daytime well-lit stuff, sure, go ahead, use all these. You're gonna notice some distortion and you're gonna notice just a, a worse quality overall when you use them. It is a good reason to switch only if you're getting this to go on a vacation and you have no other camera. For myself, I have the camera I'm filming on right now. I have a couple thousand dollars of lenses. I have a drone. This isn't the only camera I own. If the best camera is really, really important to you because you want to go on a vacation and just use a cell phone, think about maybe a Mi 9, right? Because the Mi 9 cameras are even better. Next up, battery life. Both of these phones easily get me through a full day of usage. And I'm on Telegram talking to people a lot. Link to my telegroup, Telegram groups down below, okay? But both of these devices get me through a full day and will, and if I'm very, very sparingly using it, will almost get me to a day and a half. The thing is that I usually charge both of these devices up to 80% either in the morning or at night. So I'm still charging both of them almost every day anyway. Does this have better battery life? Yes, it does. It's got a more power efficient SOC. It's got a lower power consuming display. So this does have better battery life. But if you're someone like me that wants their phone to be at 80 or 85% every day, I don't charge my batteries up to 100% ever, okay? But if, if you're like me, you're not going to necessarily interact with the advantage that this phone has at all times. There will be some times where the extra 45 minutes or an hour of screen on time that this device will get you uh, is a factor over this display or over this device, I should say. So battery life, yes, the battery life is better, okay? There's no way to get around it. The battery life is better but it's not something that I generally interact with. I have both of these devices set up almost identical with Xiaomi EU, okay? The software on this one's still a little bit buggy. It's not fully vetted. There's still some upgrades to come, okay? But I run Poco Launcher on both of these devices. Right now, the software is obviously better on the Poco F1, okay? Waiting for, waiting for the guys to get an update out to this. Gaming, gaming, you're going to see comparable performance both devices. Is this one going to be better? Yes. Will you notice it right now? Probably not. In a year, year and a half, would you notice the difference in performance as games get more demanding? Maybe, maybe yes. But will this device last you that long? We don't know. Okay, pop-up camera, big area of concern. Next up, storage. This device was more expensive because I wanted 128 gigabytes of storage. This device, I have a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, so I have like 
maybe 75, 80 gigs, just because 64 usually isn't enough. Is that cheaper than getting the more expensive model with more storage? Yes, it is. So what am I getting at with both of these devices? The build quality, Naked feels better. You're gonna have both of them in a case. Do I think that the build quality of the Poco F1 will be longer lasting and more durable than the K20 Pro? Yes, it's plastic, it doesn't have a pop-up camera. I definitely think it'll be a longer lasting device. Battery life, will the Poco F1 be easily able to have the battery replaced? Yes, with some screws. Will it be easy to replace the battery on the K20 Pro? Probably not. Both devices have a headphone jack. Do I use the headphone jack? No. If you have this device already, it functions fine. I don't see the value in spending an extra $150. Let's say you bought it for $300 after taxes. You're selling it for maybe $200 after taxes. This device is a 350-ish, right? Maybe a little bit more. Is it worth getting that? No. And probably sell this device in a year for 130, 150 bucks. Xiaomi's next flagship device at that time will probably be a 150 bucks. If you can save 50 cents a day, you'll probably be able to upgrade to the next iteration of whatever this device is, which will be better. It will have a newer processor and it will be a substantial jump over this device. But if you have this device right now, it works and operates normally, not worth it. Okay. If you guys wanna see videos about the Poco F1, click or tap right here. If you guys wanna see videos about the Redmi K20 Pro, click or tap right here. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click or tap right here. Travel channels on the bottom. Till next time, it's been Mitchell. Talk to you soon.